All right, everybody, welcome back. Found footage Friday night. I mean, technically, it's very early Saturday, which <laughs> which happens on most Fridays when I do this because I don't have time to start watching movies and everything like that until late in the evening or you know 9 o'clock p.m., 10 p.m., stuff like that. So it usually will run into Saturday and stuff, but whatever. Like I always say, until I fall asleep, it's still Friday. Right? <laughs> but um, as much as dark sense of humor I have and jokes I make and stuff like that, I'm not an evil person. Fucking, I have a conscience. So anyone who hasn't seen this movie for some reason clicked on this title and hasn't seen this or doesn't know anything about it, strongly urge you to know about this film and how controversial this movie was back in the day and still is today like 40 something years this movie is still pretty much as controversial today as it was back in 1980 and I'm of course talking about Ruggiero Diodato's Cannibal Holocaust from 1980 and Man, it's so hard to talk about this movie, just for for many reasons. But um, I just feel like this is a film that has to be seen. That like this is a movie that you have to watch to get the full effect of it. Like, yeah, it's a discussion, it's a review and stuff. So obviously, people who have seen it knows what happens and stuff. So we're just discussing this here. But for anyone who hasn't seen Cannibal Holocaust, still. Um, if you have anything against, well, I mean, I don't know anybody who loves cannibals, <laughs> but like if that type of whole subgenre of horror disturbs you and everything, then definitely don't watch the rest of this video, and especially like animal cruelty on film and stuff, like actual animal cruelty and killing and stuff of animals and stuff. Don't watch the film. First of all, and it's not like I'm going to be glorifying that shit, but like, also, just know what you're getting into, basically. And if anyone who hasn't seen this movie, as I know that there are a lot of people out there, especially younger people who haven't seen the film yet and like are getting into horror, and just like I was back in my teenage years and stuff of just being a horror fanatic and just wanting to find, I think we all go through that phase as horror fans of like wanting to find the most extreme movies out there that like after watching all like the popular like horror movies and stuff of like the Halloween movies and Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street and Child's Play and like all of those classic like slashers and like for the time you know violent movies and stuff like that I think a lot of us horror fans go through a phase of I need to find the most extreme movies out there. Like I need to see the most, I need to push the envelope completely and see just the most disturbing shit there is out there. Like I Spit on Your Grave and like a Serbian film and uh, 120 Days of Salo or, or Salo 120 Days of whatever the hell. That movie sucks so I don't even remember the title for that. But like those type of movies and then like Hannibal Holocaust and stuff like people go through that phase as horror fans I know I did that in uh, my teenage years of just wanting to up the ante and just see like what's the most disturbing movies out there and stuff so I think that's something a lot of horror fans can relate to because um, I definitely know a lot of people like growing up through my life other people I've talked to friends and everything that went through that same type of phase. Like, needing to just push the envelope and see like, all right, what's the most disturbing shit out there? Like the movies I mentioned, and even like Martyrs and Frontiers, and um, more recently in the 2000s, like Inside, and like all those type of movies and stuff that are just notorious for being disturbing and just completely controversial and banned films and everything like that, I think, Everybody can relate to that, like going through that phase as horror fans. 
but we have Robert Carmen in here who plays Professor Monroe, who I really like his performance in this movie. For a 1979, when this was filmed and released in 1980, a 1980s film about cannibalism that's shot as like a found footage movie. Like this is like considered by many to be the first found footage movie. And I've never really looked into it to see if there was anything before this that was shot in that way. Like I always say with premises for movies and ideas, I'm sure maybe there was, was something out there in this same type of style. But this is pretty much regarded as the first found footage movie. And the way that they handle the found footage is very interesting to me, which I'll get into in a bit. But um, just the whole background on this movie that this was right at the top of the video nasties list and stuff in the UK with that whole controversy at the time and with all the VHS tapes that were just taken off of shelves at video stores and stuff and people who own the video stores are actually getting fined for having all these movies on the video nasties list and everything and this was like the top of the list like Cannibal Holocaust like that was like at the top of the list like with this I Spin on Your Grave the original obviously and a few others and stuff and I forgot to mention this in my Evil Dead uh, discussion which I, I, I was so pissed <laughs> okay whatever like, yeah, yeah. everyone knows that I would take notes and stuff like that to plan my thoughts out and everything what I want to say and talk about but there's things that slip through the cracks and there's things I don't write down that I do want to talk about or bring up or even if it's a small thing and then I'll completely forget <laughs> that I'll be re-watching the video before I upload it. And I'll damn it, man, I didn't get this. <laughs> I totally forgot to mention this. Or I, fuck, I forgot to mention this thing or talk about this. Happens all the time, but what are you going to do? You know, can't be perfect every time. But um, just the whole fact that this, that um, and the reason I brought up Evil Dead was because Sam Raimi was brought up on, on obscenity charges after the release of Evil Dead. And he had to go to court and everything, and he had to clear his name and stuff and like fight those charges, which he did. But this guy, Diodato, when this film came out, not only was he charged with obscenity charges, he was also, he had murder charges added on top of the obscenity charge. Like he was charged with multiple counts of murder because this movie was so disturbing and so realistic looking that the courts thought that these actors and actresses who played the documentarians in this movie were dead. And the, the woman who played the indigenous woman who gets impaled in that iconic fucking scene, man, that everybody who knows Cannibal Holocaust knows that scene. And they had to, he had to basically, like when Diodato made finished the movie, he made all the actors and actresses sign waivers or like, uh, you know, paperwork, contract, whatever the hell you want to call it, of basically saying not to appear in media of any sort, not to appear on talk shows, commercials, anything. To like basically stay hidden out of the spotlight for a whole year after this movie was made. Just to add to the realism of the film, that this was actually like a f actually found footage and stuff. And he had to bring them all into court to show the course and saying like no, no they're alive see like <laughs> this is just it was just a movie you know like and he actually had to explain and show how he pulled how they pulled off that impalement effect which they had a well i think it was like a bicycle like a seat like a small bicycle seat that was attached to a metal pole or an iron pole and then the actress sat on it which like it was so small her body obscured the seat uh, then she had to put like a wood sticker in her mouth and look up and stuff, which just having to explain an effect in a movie to a court against murder charges <laughs> is insane, man. Like that's so crazy. Being a filmmaker and brought up on murder charges because your film is that realistic looking and that disturbing and controversial. That's absolutely insane to me. But let's talk about the movie. So. The score in this movie, I think, is excellent. 
Like, I love the score in this movie. Especially the main theme and stuff that plays at the beginning and the end and, like, a few other times throughout the movie. It's a great piece of music. It really is. Like, in my opinion, it's a great piece of music. And I've talked about it many times on the channel. I'm a musician for 20-plus years. I love that opening theme, that main theme. I actually, I don't have a lot of, like, movie soundtracks and stuff, like, in my music collection of, like, terabytes of music I've collected over the years, but Requiem for a Dream, the, the soundtrack to that is one, one soundtrack to a movie that I have and listen to, not often, but, like, every now and then I'll throw it on because I think that's one of the greatest soundtracks of all time in a movie. This Requiem for a Dream, Clint Mansell and the Kronos Quartet. Absolutely mind-blowing score for a movie. But I actually have the main theme of this movie in my collection of music. And I'll listen to it once in a blue moon because I think it's a great piece of music. And the rest of the score in this movie, too, is just very well done. Like the more sinister tracks and like the stuff with the synthesizers and the stuff that plays during all the real intense scenes and stuff. Really well done. And that main theme and stuff, I think it works so well for me because of the fact that it sounds so, I don't know, like melancholy and uplifting, which contrasts so much with this, this movie like, and what happens in it and everything and the content of this film, that it just contrasts so well that it's surreal almost, like watching this movie and then seeing some disturbing shit happening and then you get this like uplifting song in the background like it's <laughs> it actually reminds me of like anyone who grew up in the 90s and stuff with a uh, third eye blind right in the semi-charmed semi-charmed life that song is such an uplifting like happy sounding song that you can sing along to but yet the lyrics if you really like look at the lyrics and listen to the lyrics it's about crystal meth so it reminds me of that a little bit, like, of just the juxtaposition of the lyrics in that song compared to the upbeat music and everything. And same thing here, like, the content of this movie versus, like, having this main theme music throughout that's just, like, does not, shouldn't, should not fit at all. But for some reason, it, it works, like, it works very well. So, the score is great in this movie, and like I said, like, this is a very well put together movie. Especially for a 1980 Italian cannibal film. It's very well made. It's very well put together. It is extremely realistic looking. Like, this movie, I can see 100% why back in the day, why this movie was banned. This movie was banned in, in many, many countries. Some of them up until like 2000 and like a little after like the early 2000s like that you're talking 20 years that this movie was banned in certain countries until they finally unbanned them and released them on dvd and stuff like that and some of those countries even when they unbanned it and released dvd versions of it they were heavily edited and heavily cut like that's crazy to me of having a movie banned for that long and stuff and i don't like censorship of any sort I don't think anything should be censored. I don't think any type of art should be censored in any way. Like, it reminds me of growing up and seeing music videos on MTV or VH1 and stuff, and they always have to bleep out the curse words, or like, even just like lyrics that didn't have curses in them, but were like, you know, just not the type of thing that they wanted to play on, you know, a music video channel like MTV, VH1, etc. And, you know, the clean version of albums and CDs back in the day and stuff. Like, all of that. Like, I believe censorship is ridiculous. That any form of art should not be censored in any way. And that's why we have ratings for movies. That's, of course, people can sneak into movies and stuff. I mean, how many of you have snuck into R-rated films when you were young teenagers or young kids and stuff like that? Happens all the time. I used to do it all the time. <laughs> I mean, so, like, of course, there's always going to be a way around it. There's always going to be a way if people want to see something that they're not supposed to by some basically made-up grade 
and raging for a film and stuff like stuff but people are gonna find a way to see it no matter what like it's 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 never gonna be foolproof in any way but just very well made film especially for the content it has in it and stuff and such a realistic film like you watch this movie and like you can absolutely understand why back in the day when this came out that they thought this was real and I'll get into some other things that uh add to that and stuff so we have the rescue team and stuff with uh, Professor Monroe that go into the Amazon and stuff to try to find the four missing documentarians and stuff who are making their documentary called The Green Inferno. And for anyone who's an Eli Roth fan or has seen that movie, The Green Inferno, it's obviously uh, his homage to Cannibal Holocaust and all the other cannibal movies throughout the 80s, Cannibal Ferox and uh, Mountain of the Cannibal Gods and stuff. Are, are those the same movie? No, this, this, this two cannibal movies that I'm thinking of, or one movie and stuff, but it has two titles, and it's it's the same movie. I don't think it's those two, but there's like another title for one of those. But I don't know. I've never been huge into like the '80s cannibal movies. There's only been like maybe like a handful that I've watched. But obviously, this movie is the movie, <laughs> like of that genre for sure. But. Eli Roth was a huge fan of Cannibal Holocaust and he made Green Inferno as an homage to that whole genre and he named it after the documentary in, in this movie, The Green Inferno, which I'll eventually down the line cover some Roth's um, movies and stuff like that. Say what you will about Eli Roth, I've said this once on the channel. I enjoy a lot of his stuff. The guy's very passionate about horror. Like you can tell that immediately from listening to him speak about horror films and everything. His whole history of horror show and everything like that. Like you can absolutely tell this man has an absolutely huge passion for the genre and for film in general. And I respect that alone, like about him. But he's just a chill guy too to listen to and stuff like in his TV show and stuff like I just said and having him you know interview people about horror movies and him himself being in like certain documentaries about films and stuff, like horror films and stuff like that and getting interviewed and stuff the man knows his shit about horror and he's absolutely completely passionate as hell about it so just that alone gets my stamp of approval for Eli Roth but I do enjoy a decent amount of his movies. But uh, let's not get too off topic with Roth. But um, absolutely love the shots of like the monkeys and the jaguar and stuff in the uh, movie. Like just those shots of all the monkeys and the trees and everything like that. And you know the jaguar and stuff. What a beautiful animal fucking jaguars are, man. But like there's a lot of cool shots in this movie. And like, there's, like I said, it's a very well made film. For, especially for how controversial and disturbing of content that's in it it's still very well made and very well put together and stuff i mean yeah the acting and stuff was iffy at, at the least and they actually used local like amazon locals and stuff to play the cannibals and stuff so like just the making of this movie of <laughs> working with these people this indigenous people who don't speak English and then having actors and actresses and stuff that were, aren't, weren't well known at all, weren't the best actors and stuff and who had to do scenes with these people and stuff like th the whole making of this movie is, is crazy. I don't want to get too much into that either, but, um, the skeleton that Chaco finds, the, uh, the tour guy who's taking Monroe to look for the documentarians and stuff and then they find the skeletons and stuff and find out that they're, they're, they're dead and everything like that Just look great like the skeletons that they find and stuff with the worms and bugs crawling all over them this, even them like it, it looks so realistic like it looks disturbing like it, it's it's so well done it really is um the ritualistic rape scene on the beach like by the water and everything where they're the the rescue team and monroe are hiding in the trees and stuff and they're just watching from a distance of this tribal person and stuff i'm not even going to try to remember the names because there's like 
three different tribes in this movie. There's like the Shamatari, I remember that. It was like the swamp people they refer to them as, and like the Yoko Yokomonos or something, like the Yoko Onos <laughs> are the other ones, and then like the Yuka somethings or I don't know. I'm not remembering them. But um it's it's one of them. And they're doing he's doing like this fucking ritualistic as Chaco says, fucking He's just raping this fucking woman, and, and like with a stick, and then like takes like a rock or like dirt and clumps it together, and t- t- jams it up inside her and shit. Like disturbing shit, man. Like and it looks so primal. It looks so realistic, and that just adds to the disturbing nature of this movie. Like everything in this movie looks realistic. This looks like a snuff film. It really does, <laughs> which is back to like what I said at the beginning. Like I can absolutely see Diodato being brought up on charges and stuff like that for this movie, for how realistic it looks and for how raw the footage looks and just the realism of it all. Like is is really impactful, and it I think it still is to this day. Like people, even like younger generation who watches this movie and stuff, I think it still has the same effect as like people that are around the same age as me in the 30s and stuff like that who saw this movie back in the day when they were growing up and the impact that it probably had on you just like it had on me when I watched this movie for the first time and back to the generation of the 80s and stuff when the movie first came out and so like this is a movie that will always have that same effect on anyone who watches it in my opinion but um what a fucked up scene man um so the whole thing with the animal killings and everything in this movie. Now I'm not glorifying killing animals on screen. That's fucked up. I'm not an animal lover. Like what I'm trying to say, it doesn't. I don't care either way. Like it's not something that I can that I look at in this movie and like get irate over and be like, oh my, these fucking assholes, how can they do this shit on camera and stuff to animals and stuff? I don't care, really. It's disturbing, yeah, it's fucked up, absolutely. Especially, like, certain ones and stuff, like with the the muskrat and stuff, that's disturbing as shit. And that's fucked up, that they couldn't find, like, a way to do a special effect and everything like that, or practical effects to make, to do that scene, or, or even a reason to have that scene and the same with the turtle. That scene actually makes me wince a little bit. I'd be like, oh, this is fucking gross, dude. But like, at that, that type of way. Not like a, oh my god, these motherfuckers, I'm calling Peter right this second. Well, I got their number on speed dial, fucking like. <laughs> like, nothing like that. But I do know people who absolutely are like that. That, that won't even watch this movie because of the animal kills and stuff that actually happen on camera here. And as disturbing as it is, and as fucked up as it is, and I think that they definitely could have went down a different route than actually killing actual animals, I do feel like it adds to the movie, that it adds to the realism. Because knowing that, especially if you know, know this ahead of time watching this movie, like, I'm sure the people who, when they first saw this movie, and that's another reason why it was so realistic and stuff, people, when the first viewing of this movie came out and stuff, and people first went to go see it, I don't know if they knew that these were actual animal deaths on screen. Or, which leads me to what I was saying, that, like, I think, especially people who know that going into this, knowing that these animals are actually being killed on screen and us seeing it adds more realism to the human deaths and violence that goes on in the movie. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, like I said at the beginning of the video, that's the one reason why I brought it up and stuff. Like, I'm not glorifying anything. I'm not saying that it's good in any way that they did this for this film and harmed innocent animals and stuff like that. But... I do feel like, in a way, it adds to the realism just by having it in your head that this is 
actual animals getting killed on screen. That it adds more realism to the rest of the movie and everything else that happened. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But, but, yeah, like, fucked up. But it's effective, if you get what I'm saying. Like, and I'm sure I'll get blasted just for saying some of the things that I just said. But, again, not glorifying any of that type of shit. I think it's fucked up. But I do think it adds to the realism of the film. Like, for sure. And the whole idea of using the sound footage and stuff that they find. And that's another thing. Like, as being one of the first found footage movies and stuff. and like, Or, like, you know, known as the first, like, in many circles and conversations and stuff like that, found footage movie. They handle the footage and stuff very well. Like, the finding of the footage and everything. How many found footage movies do we see? nowadays and stuff the last 20 years or so like since Blair Witch basically popularized it how many times have we seen found footage movies where the whole film is the footage and then at the end the people die and that's it that's the end of the movie like we never see the footage found like I can think of like the VHS series and stuff like those films they find the footage and stuff and they watch it and that's what the stories that we see and stuff but it's few and far between when it comes to found footage movies. The way that they handle it in this film of Monroe going out there with this rescue team and dealing with the natives, and, or natives, or indigenous people, whatever you want to call, and getting the footage from the document, documentary crew, and then bringing it back to New York and showing it to a TV studio and producers and stuff who want to turn this into a documentary and show this on television, which is insane when you think about it, that, that they want to show this on television and shit. Seriously? But um, that whole idea, that um, concept of him finding the footage, bringing it back, and then us getting to watch it. Like, it's not like the whole movie is found footage, because it's not. Like I say, maybe half of this movie is actual, like, found footage, but it works like very well and that whole idea and the fact that we get to see before finding the footage and then finding the footage and then being able to see the footage viewed is a very good like implementation of the whole found footage idea and like I said this is like the first or one of like I say this all the time like I'm sure a premise was done before this like in in this type of vein or something but like this is the movie that everyone refers to as the first found footage movie so I mean just that whole idea of how they handled finding the footage and us getting to see it being found and then later on played and everything very unique compared to like found footage of today um, and then that whole turtle scene man like I touched on earlier and stuff that that scene's just disturbing. That scene, that's one scene, if I had to pick one scene to cut out of this movie, it would be that. They spent way too long cutting this turtle apart, which is, it, like, it, it's fucked up. Like, there was no need for that. Like, we already had enough shit with the, with the monkey getting his head chopped off and the tarantula getting fucking hacked with the machete and stuff, which, like I said, doesn't bother me one way or the other really I'm, I'm neutral on all that i mean how many how many of us and how many motherfuckers have killed spiders before so i mean you're gonna give someone shit for killing a spider in a movie yeah it's you know it's with a machete it's not like stepping on it but <laughs> still every almost everybody has killed a bug or a spider at some point in their life so that one doesn't bother me at all but, like, the turtle scene is absolutely disturbing. Absolutely fucked up. And there's no reason they had to go to that great a length and film that much of mutilating this turtle's fucking carcass and stuff. There's no reason for that. Absolutely not. And it, it's a very hard scene to watch. It, it, it honestly is. But uh, more on the human side and the fake side and stuff, the gore in this movie is great, too. Like, very well done. Especially for an Italian film from the late 70s, early 80s and stuff. Like, where 
he worked at Argento with Folsi's work and stuff like that. And like, so like, you know, that Italian bl fake blood that they use, that's a lot more like light red and stuff than like the fake blood that's used today and everything. This movie it doesn't have that type of effects or blood or anything. Like this looks, again, just realistic. Like the gore looks very realistic in this movie and they did a great job with it. Like chopping off uh, Felipe's leg after he gets bit by the snake. And they're fucking hacking his leg off. And then they put the machete in the fire and use it to cauterize the wound and everything. Like, well done. Like, very well done. It looks great. It looks very, very... I don't want to keep saying realistic, but, like, it does. Like, it looks very realistic. Like, it really... Especially with the whole footage angle and everything like that of the movie and how raw it looks, this movie. It just all works so well. Um, what the hell is I even right there? Oh, like the scene with burning their huts and stuff. Like the indigenous people, the tribes, uh, like little huts and houses and stuff. When they're burning them, setting them on fire and stuff to get them out of there and stuff. Fucked up, man. And so, like, <laughs> some fucked up shit, man, that comes, that goes on in this movie. And Monroe's whole real, um, whole thing about who's the real savages and stuff when they're sitting down, when he's sitting down with the TV producers and stuff like that, watching the first part of, of the footage and everything, it's a great argument to be had. Like, who are the real savages here? Is it, it's, and then all the themes in this movie that I wouldn't say are overlooked, but in a way, yeah, because of just people get blinded by the disturbingness of this movie and the controversy and everything like that, that they don't really want, they don't want to hear anything else. Like they won't pay attention to any type of subtext or any type of themes that are being explored or concepts or anything like that. But the whole idea of like journalism and stuff and the sensationalism and journalism and the whole like journalistic morals and integrity and stuff and just wanting to put out their disturbing stuff and like wanting to put out like this sick shit for people to see just to make money like it, very well explored in this the whole idea of like civil civilized countries and stuff and mixing with like an uncivilized you know, area and tribe like this and stuff that who is the real savage here is it these cannibals or is it this sick fucking film crew who goes in and fucks with them. I'm like, these people are dicks, dude. Like the like the only one who's not really a big dick is Faye, is is the woman. But like what the hell's the rest of their names and shit? Fucking what is it? Alan, I think. Yeah, Alan. He's a complete fucking asshole. Like their main like I think he's like the director of the documentary and everything. Fucking asshole, dude. And all the guys and stuff, like when they're gang raping the, the, the native and stuff on the beach. That's so fucked up, dude. <laughs> and then Faye's like protesting and everything to that. And she's like smacking fucking Alan, say like, how dare you and stuff like what we're doing right now. And then like, <laughs> but she does say like, oh, you know, we, we don't have that much like film left to film. Like we're wasting footage. Like we're wasting footage like that. <laughs> That's like your biggest complaint here. Not like the three people you're with that are taking turns gang raping this fucking native that's defenseless and like, come on, man. We're wasting footage. Like, the fuck out of here. That's ridiculous. And then the, the whole scene with the, the, the fucking forced abortion and everything. I'm just ripping this fetus out of this woman. And then throwing it right into the fucking sea. Oh, like, throwing it right into the fucking sand. And then they just beat this person to death like <laughs> this movie's so fucked up man it really is like absolutely and then we have uh professor monroe's objection to the documentary and stuff when they're all sitting there with the tv producers and stuff and they watch like the these this first part of the footage and everything he totally objects he's like i do not want this to be aired on television or anywhere and stuff <laughs> like this should not be seen and then just, you know, the producers and stuff, especially the, the woman and stuff, saying, like, this is, like, the most sensational docu documentary that, like, we've ever seen in, in so long. Like, how would you not put this out there? And, like, again, plays into the, that whole journalistic 
integrity and sensationalism of violence and everything and just very well handled very well done especially for a movie like i keep saying like from 1980 an italian film about cannibals <laughs> like with the fucking disturbing as shit scenes with killing real animals and fucking raping these indigenous people and like like i just said like a forced abortion like a ritualistic thing and like everything that happens in this movie like to be able to still explore like certain themes like that throughout this movie despite the content of it very well handled like in my opinion uh, then do we have the infamous fucking impalement scene man which i still look at that that effect and everything it still looks too real like even knowing how they did it and everything it still looks too real like i think they really might have killed this woman like <laughs> like i really think they might have like seriously like it looks too real like the whole bicycle seat she's sitting on the stick through the mouth and shit bullshit <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, that's how they did it and stuff. But, like, part of me, like, when you watch this movie, and, like, I'm sure pe some of you are going to agree with that. Like, when you're watching this movie, even if you know how they did it, it still looks too real. Just, like, the way that, like, the bulge in her neck and stuff, like, it, it, making it look like it's going straight through her and coming out her throat and everything. Like, just the bulge in her neck and shit, like, there's so much detail there that it it looks like they fucking killed this woman <laughs> like like really like straight up like it looks i can absolutely see again like saying earlier that why this he was brought up on murder charges because it looks like he fucking murdered this woman like it looks like she was actually dead like absolutely <laughs> i mean and it's such an infamous scene it's an iconic scene now in the horror community and anyone who's seen this movie the first thing usually when you think of Cannibal Holocaust is that scene. And I don't even know how YouTube is going to handle like the thumbnail and stuff for this, but uh, it might, they might even age restrict it, but who knows, but that's going to be the thumbnail. How do you not make the, <laughs> that shot, the fucking thumbnail for this movie? Um, and then we get to see the rest of the footage that the rest of the, the producers and stuff for the TV station stuff didn't see yet that only Monroe saw and from fucking brutal shit man of just the Yonamono and that's another thing who killed and impaled the woman now I've read over the years that you know the obvious thing and stuff is that that you would think on a first watch and stuff is that it was one of the indigenous tribes but when they're filming this, you see Alan laughing. Uh, then, uh, I forget who says it. Is it Faye who says it or something? And she says, like, you know, Alan, we're, we're rolling, we're filming and stuff. They killed this woman, didn't they? After fucking raping her on the beach and gang raping her and everything. Like, did they, they fucking killed her? Like, that, that's a theory I've heard over the years. That they the documentary crew killed this fucking woman after gang raping her and everything. I then just like tried to make it look like from dramatic effects and stuff in their documentary that this was done to her by one of the tribes. So, I mean, just the fact of that alone, if that's really what the implication is supposed to be, which it kind of seems like it is, that these sick fucking people did that to this woman after fucking brutally raping her yeah they're the fucking savages bro like, <laughs> they are absolutely the savages of this movie without a doubt and then and that's i i'm, I'm almost positive that's the implication because then the yona i wrote this one down the yonamomo tribe the yoko ono tribe <laughs> they fucking take their revenge for that they attack the crew and then we get that fucking sick scene, the fucking Jack getting castrated, like right there on camera, dick fucking cut off. And then, then just him just getting hacked to death, dude. And his, and again, the gore is amazing in this movie, and it's so realistic looking, just through the, the the way that the film shot, and how raw looking the footage is. 
and just seeing all these indigenous people just hacking this person's body up and intestines everywhere and fucking body parts all over the place and his head's laying on the ground and then one of the indigenous tribe members and stuff lifts his head up like that and fucking tosses it to the ground and shit like it looks disturbing as fuck <laughs> it really does man uh, then Faye being captured and uh, her being fucking raped and stuff by all these tribal members and everything and she's brutally raped and then fucking she's decapitated too and like <laughs> dude man it's fucked up and then I think they just realized near the end too of making this movie that they're like alright yeah this is getting a little fucked up because then we just see Alan fall dead in front of the camera and stuff and I don't know I think we even see Mark get killed right like we only see Jack get castrated and chopped apart and we see Faye get raped and beheaded and stuff like that and then we just see Alan fall in front of the camera so I think even them like and Diodato at the end of this were like alright I think we're going a little overboard <laughs> Like, maybe we'll just, like, save the other two and uh, not show them being brutally massacred and stuff. But, um, yeah, but they're, they're all dead. <laughs> and, and, and we're most likely eaten for dinner for the next, like, week or something like that. And um, I love how the one guy watching, like, part of the, the studio and stuff like that, immediately as soon as the, the footage ends immediately without saying a word just gets up and walks out <laughs> like immediately like as soon as the footage ends cuts he just stands up and just walks out the door like <laughs> that would be my reaction too man i'd be like are you serious like this is what you want to put on tv this is what you want to make a documentary of out of this footage and put on television are you fucking kidding me this is a career ender like this is fucking charges going to be brought up on this we're going to be sued into oblivion for putting this out there are you serious and then yeah i just love how he immediately walks away like that like and then the other one the other producer gets on the phone and says like, he, he wants all the footage burnt and everything and destroyed which good fucking call man because like i said massive lawsuits against this production company, television company, whatever the hell they are. Fuck it, if they put any of this out there and on television in the 80s, dude, like, come on. Uh, then Monroe's whole final line and stuff of I wonder who the real cannibals are, which bothers me. <laughs> like, it's fine when he says it earlier in the film when he says who are the real savages. That's fine. Savage doesn't imply that you're a cannibal that you're eating people alive or dead whatever it don't matter but his line at the end saying i wonder who the real cannibals are it's always bothered me because it's it it's it's the cannibals <laughs> it's the tribal people like they're the cannibals they're the real cannibals <laughs> it's not it's not the other people like they don't eat people fucking so, so the, that whole phrasing and stuff like that of putting it that way and using the word cannibal instead of like savage or like monsters or like like who's the monsters in this situation who's the savages and stuff like i said earlier so that fucking crew man that crew member <laughs> uh, the crew members 100 percent, absolutely fucking crazy like if you think about it, they're going into somebody's place of where they live and everything their village and stuff they're causing shit. It's like if somebody came into your fucking home. That's your. That's where you live. And people are coming in there and stuff uninvited. And they don't understand. And there's a huge lack of communication and language barrier. And cultural barrier. And everything like that. How do you expect these people to react? Now, I mean, maybe not over the top like they're doing this movie. But I mean, like, they don't know any better. Like, this is an off-the-grid indigenous tribe. They don't know any better, and like they say a few times in this movie, it's like that they live in the Stone Age. So, like, can you really blame them? That's a whole nother discussion to be had, which I won't get into. But that whole thing with the, that last line with them saying, who's the real cannibals? Every time I hear it, it's like, the actual cannibals. Like, those are the real ones. Those are... <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then we get the amazing uh, main theme and stuff play again over the credits and stuff and, and I wanted to do this movie like 
a week or two ago for found footage Friday and stuff. And uh, I don't know, I just didn't get around to it. And then I was like, all right, how am I going to even talk about this movie? And somehow it did for you know, 40 minutes. But um, it's just one of those movies you got to watch. It's one of those movies that you just have to experience for yourself. Like, if you want to even experience it, <laughs> like I've said. But, like, it's definitely one of those type of films that you have to just see it for yourself. That hearing about it, all the people who have heard about this movie and stuff over years and never pulled the trigger on actually watching it, it it's just not enough. Like, it, you need to experience it to get the full effect of this movie. And this that's the whole reason and stuff that this movie is so controversial was so much back in 1980 and still is to this day and is regarded as one of the most controversial disturbing movies there is do I think it's one of the most disturbing movies out there I don't know not really like I, I can think of many others like a, like even just a Serbian film, which is like many people's go-to for like most disturbing movie and stuff like that. That's much more disturbing than this movie. Are you serious? Like, <laughs> we're fucking, uh, the whole fucking him. I'm, I'm not even getting into a Serbian film. This will go on for fucking too long and shit that I really don't care about. I really don't care for that movie or anything. But, um, all right, guys, I got one more, but um, I probably won't have the review up for it or discussion for it up until... I don't know, like the afternoon Saturday, because uh, I got a, a doctor's appointment in the morning and everything, and it's already getting late, but uh, I watched it already, and uh, if anything, I'm, it's a newer film, it's like from this year, I think it was, it was recommended to me, so um, I'm going to do probably a spoiler-free discussion video on it, and then I'll do a little spoiler discussion on it also. But, um, alright guys, I'll see you guys in a bit with that last film for Found Footage Friday, and then I'm going to be just trying to figure out what to watch for, uh, you know, Saturday night and everything. So, alright guys, see you soon.